what's the little thing I can tell you about Susan? She feels most at peace around plants and books, which dates back to some memories around good times spent in libraries. Um, and she thinks the greatest sci-fi film ever made is Star Cops. So you can fight about that later. Susan. Hello, everyone. Everybody hear me okay? I'll try not to shout. And I hope you're okay with my accent. But Stephen Novella warmed you up, I guess. So I'm just putting my little timer on so I don't go over too far. So thank you guys so much for having Mark Edward and I here. We've had an absolutely wonderful time here in Christchurch. Um, it, <laughs> it's been three years since I've been back to New Zealand. And thank you. You guys are always so kind and always so welcome. I love coming and seeing uh, the, the New Zealand skeptics to hang out with you guys. Um, have us back, please, in three years. <laughs> We'd like to come back again. I especially would like to come back and see how Christchurch has improved over the years because it's so, it's so beautiful here, all the work they're doing. So, all right, I let you know ahead of time, I'm probably not going to do Q&A. And that's because I have so much I want to tell you. And it is a little bit of a complicated story. I will be here all day today and tomorrow and even until Monday. And if you have questions, please come and talk to me. I'm happy to answer all your questions. I will have a slide at the very end that will be uh, show this. Oh, I should turn it on. Oh, wow. Okay. So I will be, I have, we'll have a slide at the very end that will show our website where all the information of everything that I'm going to be telling you, all the notes, all the slides, pretty much everything is on there. So if you want to go into more depth about what I'm going to be talking about, everything's on my website and I will show you. So at the very end, pull out your phones, take a picture of the screen so that you'll have it. That would be wonderful. So one of the things I want to mention right off is I'd like you guys to um, take a look at this building that we're in. Isn't it absolutely amazing? The venue that was chosen is incredible. And Mark Edward noticed on the outside of this building right here, there's some wonderful gargoyles with hands. They're just hands that are right on this wall here. So you might want to take a chance, take a minute and look at that during one of the breaks. And also this beautiful stained glass behind you. Has anybody really taken time to look at how amazing this is? At the very top, the Madonna and Child, that's actually supposed to be humanity. And then below her, you will see the four uh, figures. There's action. There's justice, there's truth, and there's thought underneath. And this, was, this uh, stained glass was made in, uh, commissioned in 1924, and it is amazing. It was to commemorate the Great War, which we now know as World War I, but at the time, they didn't know there was gonna be a World War II, so that's what uh, you know, we think of psychics. They didn't let them know there was gonna be a second war, and to hold off on creating the stained glass. So I am from Salinas, California, and I welcome you all to come and visit me in Monterey County Skeptics whenever you're in the United States. Please come out and hang out with us here. And Mark, Edward, and I will also be speaking in Melbourne, uh, Canberra, Sydney, and Brisbane. So we're, not, we're here in, uh, we, we're gonna get back to the United States just before um, the uh, Christmas holidays. All right, so. This person right here on, uh, in the yellow, <laughs> the person on the other side is myself. I wanted to talk just briefly about conferences and the importance of attending conferences. I mean, we can all watch the podcast, listen to the podcast, watch the videos, but really it's very important that you guys get out and go and meet and greet with each other, get to know each other. This is really important to grow our community. We have to grow to get um, ourselves to become more, um, you know, being able to do more things and become more um, active. And this person here is Robert Lancaster, and you may or may not have ever heard of Robert Lancaster. He has a really wonderful Wikipedia page. But this was one of my early um, heroes in the skeptic community because Robert Lancaster created a, a website back in the old days when they used to create these websites that would probably look really kind of dated if you looked at it now. Um, for Sylvia Brown, who was a psychic that was um, one of the more popular psychics in America. Sylvia Brown, she was something else. So I went to a conference, the James Randi Educational Conference, better known as TAM. Anybody else been to a TAM before? Well, there's a 
couple. All right. So the amazing meeting was where I was able to um, meet Robert Lancaster in person. I'd been following his work on how to kindly and with instruction and with detail and fact, without the emotion um, and arguing with people, he was able to write about Sylvia Brown and make a really Im big impact on combating the, the, the things that she had done, the Sylvia Brown person. And so I, my whole goal was to get to the conference and shake his hand, and this is a picture of mine. He recently died just a few months ago, um, and uh, after this picture was taken, he had a very massive stroke, and he was in a wheelchair, and he was unable to um, continue his work because of the stroke. So I'm going to be talking about several different things today. This is kind of an interesting photo. If anybody's been following my work, you probably already know what this is all about. Uh, anybody here kind of have a clue what these might mean? <laughs> There's a couple of people. OK, so we've done several different investigations on psychics. We call them grief vampires. Those are those people who are the psychic detectives, the people who say that they claim to speak to the dead. That's kind of where my focus um, has been a lot lately. And so we've done several different operations, and they all have very interesting names. We have Operation Bumblebee, Operation Ice Cream Cone, Operation Tater Tot, Operation Pizza Roll, and Operation Peach Pit. These are some of our, difference, our uh, different stings that we have done. And all of these are on my website that you can learn more about. So Operation Pizza Roll, and somebody asked me today, what's a pizza roll, I guess? Uh, it's just a little piece of bready kind of stuff with pizza toppings inside and with cheese. It's really delicious. But the, um, so when we do our stings, we're, they're not meant to educate the audience in real time. We're not trying, to, if we go to a psychic event, we're not there to educate the people in the audience because we're part of, we want to pretend we're part of the audience. We don't want to get up in the middle of the audience and say, you're a fake, you're a fraud. No, mm -mm, we don't do that kind of thing. Um, we're trying to aim directly at the medium, the person on the stage, and her handlers or his handlers. That's important to us, is to let them know that we know what they're doing and we're on to them. And again, we're invisible because they're not psychic, so they don't know who we are in the audience, right? So if we're in the audience or if we're on their social media using different names, it doesn't even have to be myself or Mark Edward. It could be anybody who works on our team. And I have lots of people who work on our team. And they don't know which one's a believer and which one's a skeptic that's there to sting them. Because as I said, they're not psychic. Everything we do is fully within the law, which might push it a little bit. Everything is well planned. We record everything, take photographs, everything we can possibly do. And we issue um, written um, uh, articles about them and you'll find them again on my website if you want to go into detail about any of the stings and the different things that we've done and everything push we try to push it by uh, making sure that the media is involved and that's a lot of things that people forget it's one thing to write an article do a sting do some research on something and then release it to the skeptic community it's like we're preaching to the choir so the best thing we can do is try to get the media involved especially at the beginning and I'll be talking about that and then we push it as far as we can. And you know us Americans, we're pushy. So, you know, if we can do it in a friendly kind of way. So what I'm going to be talking about today is mostly is Operation Pizza Roll. This is the one that we're kind of most famous for right now. And um, this is a psychic medium that you don't need to know who these people are, to be honest with you, because they're, they're just the flavor of the day. But this is Thomas John. I'll be calling him TJ, because I think it really bugs him when I do that. So um, TJ is a psychic medium that's operating in America right now. He's some guy. He's got a TV show, and I'll show you that in a minute. He's actually got a new TV show out. So we wanted to go to see, um, I wanted to put together a sting, because the New York Times, I'm sure you've heard of the New York Times, had told Mark Edward a long time ago, if you ever catch somebody in a hot read, then we want to do a story on that. I don't know, this is a skeptics crowd. I hope you understand the difference to what a hot read is and a cold read is. A cold read is just generally talking about somebody based on their, what they look like, their, their clothing they're wearing. Hot read means we have some information on you before you get there. And there's th lots and lots of ways of getting information on somebody before they get to the event. So a hot read is very hard to catch a psychic in. Some psychics do use hot reads, most cold read and some use a combination of both. But to catch somebody in a hot read, that's gold. We've done it so f rarely. And to catch somebody in a hot read and catch them in such a way that there's no way they can get out of it. There's no way that they can, they can talk themselves out of it at all. 
that's really, really hard. And to have in in, uh, proof, I mean absolute proof. So that's what we were aiming for, to try to catch a psychic. So this guy showed up on my wire. I didn't know who he was before that. It was just some guy. And what we did is we created these fake Facebook uh, accounts. We've had these Facebook accounts for years. And as I said, this is a little complicated, so hopefully you guys all follow along okay. If not, you can look it up on my website or you can ask me later. So we created fake Facebook profiles. These fake Facebook profiles were held by a group of people working with me from all over the world. And what they did is they got into a fake Facebook group, they put together a secret Facebook group and they told a story. And they were telling the story around two characters who were going to attend TJ's event. That's the idea. So now it's important for you guys to understand that the two people who were going to go to this particular event, in this case it was Mark Edward and myself, um, could not know what was on those Facebook pages. So that's, we're trying to double blind the, the sting. So what those people do is for, for 10 days, in this case we put it together in 10 days, they were um, the pizza rollers, they call themselves pizza rollers. They created a story that was being told through these Facebook pages. These are people all over the world who are having conversations with each other as if they know each other, playing characters. I hope you guys got that, it's kind of confusing. So anyway, what I have here, you are not gonna be able to read these things, so just stop trying, all right? So, <laughs> but they're all on my website, you can take your time and look at it if you want. But basically what happens is they created a character for me, I'm Susanna Forsyth Wilson, and Mark was Mark Wilson, which is his legal name. And that way we could get in if we had to show ID. So these are Facebook pages that are created with us in mind, and they tell a story. My story was that my brother had died of pancreatic cancer, and he was my twin brother, and he just recently died. It was really sad. And Mark's story was that his father had died years and years ago of heart problems. And now that Mark is getting towards that same age, he's starting to worry that he's having the same heart problems and that he's having tests done. That was our story that we went in to the, see the psychic for. So throughout these Facebook pages, which were, t we tagged the psychic, the medium, and I guess you understand that means that the psychic is getting a notification saying, hey, these people are gonna be attending your event, this psychic event. And so that is kind of like a way of baiting him to come over and look at those Facebook pages and get an idea that these people are gonna be attending. The Facebook pages are, look really realistic. They've lasted for years. We've used them for many other stings. We just keep changing the characters, keep changing the photos, so the history exists. And in this way, we're able to, um, you know, you can't come back and, and look at that same, si um, same Facebook profile. There's no way because we've changed the names and reused the characters. But it does have a history. So a lot of things go up on these, these pages. Sometimes they're talking about our day at work. Sometimes they're talking about, you know, problems you're having with your kid or whatever. Deepak Chopra quotes, you know, astronomy meme of the day or what, I don't know. So there are all kinds of different things. But as you can see, it's very intricate. These people are having long discussions about wanting to go to a CS psychic because I, Susanna, um, she was having dreams about her brother who died just recently. So sad, his name is Andy. I want you to know, he's just very sad. So my twin brother, was I was having dreams about him apparently and somebody suggested, why don't you go see a psychic? There's this guy, he seems like he's really good. I've heard great things about him, tagging that psychic. And um, you can see if you were to read these, and you can on my website, there's all kinds of conversations. Here's Mark's, um, you know, they were sharing this uh, heart disease um, things on his page. Again, it's all bait for the medium. And then on and on, you know, different stories about conversations about, um, you know, here I just, apparently, my character just signed up for a Facebook fan of the week for this guy to try to win a, win a, 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 th a thing, but again, it allows us to tag the, the medium that we're planning on seeing. So Mark and I show up at the venue, it's maybe 50 people or so, and um, what we're able to do is Mark and I are dressed to be cold red, which means that we are dressed in a way to look like we're um, people we're not. Like Mark has nothing to do with the military, he wore a, a pin for the US Navy. 
and different things like that so that when we went, if the psychic had cold read us and went up to us and said, you know, something about the military, well, we would know the only way he did that was cold reading Mark because otherwise Mark would have nothing to do with the U.S. military. Um, those kinds of things. So we didn't know what to expect, you know. We've tried this several times before. We hadn't caught somebody yet in a hot read that we can absolutely prove. This is one of these things that most people in the skeptic community do is we don't want to spend a lot of money on these things. You sit in the back if you go see a psychic. If you're doing anything like this, you have to sit in the front. The real believers are right here in the first and second and third row. That's where you got to sit. That's a VIP. That's $161 a seat in this case. And so you got to be up here and you got to be, well, the first row for every psychic event is reserved for the real fans who've probably seen the psychic over and over. And when the psychic's having a weak moment, they go to one of their fans and they basically tell the story that they've told several times about the person. So we're in the front as close as we can get. We're third row in. So this is him. This is TJ and this is our view. <laughs> we sat in the, as close as we could, and we stayed in character the whole time with tissues, Kleenex, you know, in our pockets so that we could cry on cue. A lot of things happened, and um, so to make a long story short, short I'm wired with, um, to be recording everything, plus I'm recording openly with my phone, and the um, psychic, after many things happened, and you can see that in the articles that are on the website, but one of the things that happened is the psychic gets on the, he's on the stage perfectly still with his microphone and third reading in, I think he says, I'm getting a brother who wants to reach out to his twin sister. I'm like, ding, that's me. Because all Mark and I know are these very basic stories, which I just told you. That's all I know. Andy, he died of pancreatic cancer three years ago and it's really sad he was my twin brother and I want to reach out to him. Mark's father had heart problems and he's you know, starting to have problem, worries about it. So that's all we know. We raise our hand. That's fantastic. Let's see if I can get this to play. Do I have to tap on it? Let me see. So this is very quick audio. Somebody's twin. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I have to tell you, just as soon as I'm tapping into you, somebody's making me aware of cancer. Is this your brother? Did he have cancer? Yes. Okay. Because he's shown me cancer. And I get in here, which to me would show me stomach or pancreas. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So he's, he's stepping forward. Now, this feels quite recent to me in terms of he didn't die a long time ago, right? No. Okay. So I got him, right? Well, that's fine, except that I know this information. So he, so, so he could have said, I read your mind, because I knew that information. That's another problem that a lot of skeptic groups, they try to catch somebody, they know the information. They're in on it. So you have to blind it. You have to double blind it. All right. So, um, this so is your dad problem. passed from heart problems, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I, want to tell, and I want to tell you also, I feel... <laughs> Uh, this was not a, a, a recent death, is that correct, with your dad? No. He didn't die recently. No. Um, now, I don't want to scare you, but are, do you, have you had your heart checked? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, you need to stay with that. You need to stay with that. They're telling me, your dad's telling me, <coughs> it's not as bad as you think. But you, you, like, I feel like you're almost obsessing about it, actually. Like, I, I almost feel like you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, like one thing was told to you, and now you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah. You're, yeah, but your dad is saying, not as bad as you think. I can't but, sleep. Right. Well, that would be because yeah, you're obsessing about it. But your, your dad is saying, it's not as bad as you think. Now, you must be going for a test in the next seven days. Is that correct? In the next week? Uh, no, I just had some. Oh, you just had some tests. Yeah. Okay. And have they not told you everything yet? No. Okay, so because I'm seeing in the next that's seven... That's why I came here. To... Okay, well, that's, well, here we go. <laughs> Welcome to the haunted house. Uh, so um, there's, there's something in the next seven days. There's something in the next seven days that you're going to hear about. And like I said, I see it being kind of mixed. It might be something where it's like this needs to be changed or that needs to be changed. But it's not going to be like a death sentence or something like you are, 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 are feeling. Now, um, I want to just share with you, um, um, <clears throat> and obviously, you know, medical stuff comes through. I always tell people, it's like, you know, you have to, obviously, you go to your doctor and stuff. But they, they know about things and they'll share things. It's usually more like how they're doing it now, like it's an energetic thing. <clears throat> so, like I said, I just feel like... Um, 
you, you need, you know, and, it, it, and your dad is showing me it's passed down. So there's definitely, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a passed down thing. Okay, that was a little longer and I had it on there because I wanted to make sure that I included the part where he says that I want you to go to a real doctor. I didn't want to have him accuse me of saying that I didn't, uh, that I left that little bit out. One of the, so that's fine. This is all the information that Mark and I know, right? Is we know this. So what happens whenever, it's a 15 minute reading he gives us. So he's given us like two or three minutes already. What is he gonna fill the rest of the time with? Everything else that's on the Facebook pages. But Mark and I don't know what's on the Facebook pages. So we have to agree to everything he says and look confused and, and pretend to cry and all these other things. And at some point, um, I got very confused. I act very confused, crying. And Mark's fanning me with a piece of paper because I'm turning red. I'm so excited we caught the guy. And I'm like, oh, really emotional in the moment, you know. But it wasn't because of what he said. And one time he says to me, you know, I was confused at what he was saying. I don't know. And he says, well, we gotta, you got to get together with this. you got to figure this out because we've got to move on. I'm like, well, I'm really emotional because you're talking to my brother. And he's like, well, we got to move on. Get up, you know, like, basically get with it, lady. You know, it, it was very caring. So here, here's a point where he says something about smoking. Remember, Mark and I know nothing at this point. So let's but see. Somebody's talking about they were smoker, 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 and they quit. I think it's your brother. Is that true? Did yeah. he smoke and then quit? Did he quit uh, smoking? Yeah. Several times. No, 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 your brother, the twin, the twin. Oh, my brother? Yes. Oh, well, my brother did too. Yeah, both, both of ours did. <laughs> no, but I think it's your bro your twin. Did he, did he quit smoking? Yes, yes. Okay, okay so he, he quit smoking. Okay, so what does that tell us? He's arguing with me that I, my brother is the one that quit smoking, not the one that Mark admitted to saying that it was your brother. We didn't know what to say because we didn't know anything about smoking. So after the fact, I can let you know this, I, after we're completely done with the reading, I text the pizza rollers. I'm like, who quit smoking? What was that all about? And they said, I don't know anything about that. Well, what, when we took the time to go back and look at the old Facebook pages, remember I said some of these Facebook pages were old. We'd used them over and over. One of those life events had been put up on one of the Facebook pages, and this is my brother, Andy, and he had quit smoking in, back in 2013. So the psychics or his handlers had gone that far back into the Facebook pages and noticed the life event for smoking. My team didn't even know that. Mark and I didn't know that. One person knew that. So another thing that was put up, um, the, he was arguing with us about Michigan. And I've never been to Michigan, Mark's never been to Michigan, but we had to pretend we knew something about Michigan. So I said something like, oh my brother, I th yeah, we traveled all over the world, we've been a lot of places, and yeah, we lived in Michigan for a while. And he's like, oh, okay. So again, after the fact, we said to our pizza roller people, what was Michigan all about? And they didn't know anything about what Michigan might have been. But remember I told you that we used a lot of filler pictures and filler stuff to make these Facebook pages look really realistic? So this is a filler picture that one of my team noticed that they just put up, just, just to put up. It's for a place called Frenchman's Creek Cornwall. Well, that's the UK. But if you Google that, you get this map in Michigan. <laughs> Cornwall Creek flowage in Michigan. So that's where they got the Michigan. Again, my team didn't know anything about it. Mark and I didn't know anything about it. Who knows about it? The only person who knows about it is the psychic. So we did a selfie with him. Isn't that great? He still didn't know we were part of Mark Edward and Susan Gerbic. Um, this is on his Wikipedia page, by the way. Because um, we can do that. So here's Mark's pen for the Marines that, you know, if he was going to cold read him. Because we paid for VIP. So we got to go to the meet and greet afterwards, give his book and all that kind of stuff. A lot happened. A lot more things we caught. But again, I don't have really the time to talk about it right now. So now what? We caught him. Yeah, we caught him. G -g 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 contacted the New York Times. He's like, oh man, that's amazing. This is great, fantastic. A year goes by and nothing happens. And I'm like, oh my God. I get a hold of the guy who's writing the article for the New York Times and his, his name is Jack Hitt. And he says, well, the problem is my editor says, I wasn't at the event, so I didn't get the ambiance. I didn't get the experience of it. I didn't get to feel like I was with you guys and know what was going on. I'm like, fine, I will do another one. Operation Peach Pit. 
So I put together this one, and I only put this together. We already caught a psychic in a hot read. So this one was done for the benefit of the reporter from the New York Times, so he could be in it from the very beginning. And this time, Mark and I didn't go. We went to a different psychic. His name is Matt Frazier. You don't have to know who it is. He's got a TV show out now. But we sent another team of people. And this is, uh, happened in um, Pennsylvania or Connecticut. I can't even remember now. So this is Kenny Biddle. I don't know if you can see that really well right here. He's wearing glasses that record everything. And this is his lovely wife, Donna, and other skeptics. Here's the psychic, Matt Frazier, surrounded by skeptics who are there to fool him. So they all had complete backstories, complete Facebook pages. They all played characters. They didn't know anything but a little tiny bit. They walked into the casino. It was held at a casino, completely in character. I think one was was like an old boyfriend and they were trying to get back together again. It was just whole stories that they had, hoping they would get hot read by the psychic. And they, we did the whole thing through and he did not hot read us, which was fine because the, psych, the, the reporter was able to go and he was able to sit in at their house when we did everything over Skype. I gave him all their instructions over Skype. Um, so he was able to sit in there. He watched all the Facebook pages being created. And Daniel, that was right here, Daniel, wave your hand. So Daniel Ryan over here was one of the people on the team that created these Facebook pages for Operation Peach Pit. So if you want to know more information about Operation Peach Pit or what happens, Daniel and other people were creating these pages uh, unbeknownst to what Mark and I were doing, to creating scenarios for these people. So again, we didn't catch him in a hot read, but I mean, he took selfies with people in the, in the group and he didn't know that we were all fake and that we were there to sting him. So going back to Peach Pit, I mean, Pizza Roll, so the problem was, everything was fantastic. New York Times loved the story. He talked to the editors. They were like really into it, but it didn't go. For some reason, it didn't happen. Another year goes by. So this is two years in, and I'm just so frustrated. <laughs> but we've got all this evidence that everybody loves the story. His people love the story. The, the New York Times is like, you know, he said, I went to the Christmas party and told everybody about what you guys did, and they love it. I'm like, okay, great. Why can't we get this published? It was going to appear in the New York Times magazine, which is a huge deal, like 2 million subscribers. So we went to, <laughs> so I said, fine. So I went back. And we created Wikipedia pages because I run a Wikipedia editing group. And you may or may not know about that. I usually lecture about our Wikipedia let, uh, uh, editing group. There's um, 140 of us or so. We're writing Wikipedia pages in multiple languages, all concerning science, scientific skepticism, and the paranormal. You can read about that on my website. And I would love to have you join us. And we'll train you up and make you Wikipedia editors. But this is Thomas John's Wikipedia page. We created this anticipating that the New York Times article was going to come out. So we created it so that we would have it ready. So the day that the New York Times article publishes, people will Google the name and they will go and they will find a Wikipedia page, which is correctly written. It has great sources, but these are all sources before um, the New York Times article came out. So Seatbelt Psychic, this is the same guy, Thomas John. He had a TV show called Seatbelt Psychic. I know it's crazy, but you sit in the car, you drive away, and he gives you, talks to your dead people in the that are in the back seat with the writers, okay? So it's supposed to be like an Uber or something. But I, I said, you know what, fine, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna write an article for Skeptical Inquirer magazine, which is, I write for, and I'm gonna go into depth and, and, and analyze this show, because this is what I do. I do a lot of this kind of stuff. And I sat down and I was researching it and I spent a lot of time listening to these videos of him doing these cold reads. And after a moment, I figured out something there was a lot of things that were odd about the show. Like when there was two people who were in the car, they got in and they sat down always in this way, where the middle person sat in the, this, this person sat in the middle seat. They never sat over here, which seems like that'd be more normal to slide over, right? It's a nice comfortable car, but it's still not, it's still not right. So I thought this is really odd. And they always looked a little too put together. And anybody who's done any acting or knows anybody who's actors, when you show up to do, do acting, you don't wear logos. There's no ads, no, no, no um, baseball teams, football, rugby, or whatever. I mean, half of you guys would not be able to go into the, to, a, um, to do anything because you have logos on your shirts, no Nikes, nothing. They wear very flat looking clothing that would have nothing on it. And that looks suspicious to me. And they also looked a little too put together. Nobody had shopping bags. Nobody offered to be taken to the airport. Just a little too right. 
And also, they got in the car, and it showed them filming it from the beginning. He sat down in the seat, put the seatbelt on, and drove away from the curb. And then he, he says, oh, so how's your day? And they're like, oh, it was really good. And he says, you know, I'm a psychic medium, and uh, I noticed your dad got in the car with you. You know, it's like that. And so they do a reading, and the, and the people are like, whoa, that's astonishing. So I'm thinking, something's weird here, because he never asked him for an address. And I know he's supposed to be psychic and all, but <laughs> he never put anything into the little, you know, machine at the, nothing. They got in the car and they drove away. And I thought, well, that's really odd. So anybody have an idea why there's somebody sitting in the middle of the seat, not over to the side? Because you can see them on camera, right? And the other thing I thought was odd, if you watched the show, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you were to watch Seatbelt Psychic, you would see there's like five or six camera angles. So either those cameras are really micro small, or they're hidden behind these, these rests here, and here, and here, and here, and nobody reacts to them. So why would you sit in a car with a bunch of cameras aimed at you and not say anything, unless you're prepared to sit in there? But I didn't know for sure until this woman comes along. She sits in the car, and he asks her for some kind of personal item so we can connect better with her. So she reaches into her purse, and she hands him her name tag from work. And if you stop and pause the video, and do a screenshot, flip it over, you know her name is Wendy Westmoreland. Two minutes, I'm on her Facebook page, she's an actress. <laughs> then I said, oh, I am DB. Oh, oh, this is her. Oh, he said, I'm getting your brother, your brother um, Skipper, and he wants to connect with you, blah, 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 you know, all that nonsense. So on her Facebook page, there's this old 1970s photo. It's really easy to see that it's, it's easy to notice because it's a different color than most pictures. And happy birthday, Skipper, you will never be forgotten. So this is the same picture that they also show on the show, you know, later. But I think this is where he got information from her. And if you can know somebody's name, you can find out a lot about them. And especially uh, actors and actresses, they have usually open Facebook pages. And so it's easy to find things about them because they want to be public and they want to be known. So I suspect that somebody probably at the venue when they have all the lineup of all the people who are waiting to go in to the, see the psychic, I mean not see the psychic, be on the show, there's probably somebody walking around with official looking name tag and a clipboard walking around going, so did you have the vegetarian meal? I can't remember, did you, what was your name again? And writing their name down, okay thanks, how about you, were you, you know, and, and just checking off their names or something, just mingling among them, Googling them and there they are. So that's what I suspect. Oh, there's, he's the only one on this show. So why is there a cast? Why are these people on IMDb? Of course, I can look at their Facebook. I can look at these things and look them up on Facebook. And, and it corresponds, again, to what I, he said to them in, this, in the show. Another thing I thought was really odd. If he's the only one on the show, why is there a casting director, casting producer, casting associate casting, casting coordinator, senior casting assistants? He's the only one on the show. Why would you have cast? So. That was enough to get the New York Times interested because I wrote this article and I said to Jack, I said, if you don't find a way of getting this onto the New York Times, I'm going to publish it in Skeptical Inquirer, all my investigation on Seatbelt Psychic. And he says, give me three days. And he gave me three days and they came out with it in the New York Times magazine. So this was huge. This is February, March of this last year. So this was the New York Times article. It's all linked to on my website if you want to read it. And um, then that same day, I had this published, which is the article I had written for Skeptical Inquirer about Operation Pizza Roll. This is all coordinated to come out at the exact same time, because we knew the New York Times was coming out like on Tuesday. So we had it all come out at the exact same time for maximum input. When people are Googling this guy's name, we want him to hit all the good, you know, skeptic stuff we've written about it, the detail. Showed up on my website, showed up on Skeptical Inquirer. Um, and he hit the Drudge Report. I don't know if you know what that is, but this is really funny that it would hit. It's a really uh, right-wing um, kind of website that has news on it, but we hit that. Um, we also hit, this is the New York Times, uh, the front page, the printed version. Of course, we didn't hit the top. We're in the second fold. Here we are right here. So it hit the newspaper as well as the magazine. It was massive. Oh, we hit the week. I don't know if you've seen this. One of my friends was looking through it and happened to see a picture of me and James Randi. And he's like, wait a minute, I know her. <laughs> so they reprinted it in this, this, um, um, this magazine called The Week. And that has a huge following as well. 
and then here's Thomas John. So it's basically the same article reprinted. It had a, uh, if you do want to watch a video that enca encapsulates all that happened, this is a great website to, to look at. It's Holy Cool Aid. It's on my website. You'll be able to see it. It's really funny. He talks about it. So we're, you know, we're all done. We're like, what the heck? We've got it. We hit the New York Times. I had media contacting me for weeks. It was crazy. But what now? You know, so we said, let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing this. How much farther can I take this? So we went, we, I wrote multiple articles about different things I learned and different things that had happened. I went on and on about it. Oh, <laughs> so I wrote, <laughs> this is great. Okay, so Tom, TJ, he does webinars, you know, those things that you do. Um, and he had done webinars in the past and uh, showing you how to, you know, check your chakra and your, you know, and your woo-woo stuff, you know, crystals, lessons that people can buy these, these, uh, um, these lessons. So one of the people on my team, he went in and he watched all the webinars. And at one point on the webinar, you know how you kind of click off the screen and it goes to your desktop? So that's what happened in this video. So again, click pause, screenshot, and we have his inbox. And that was really interesting. I've taken all the good stuff out of here. Phone numbers, complaints. There's all kinds of stuff in this thing. And it had all kinds of information. You know, there was just so much. It was like mining all this great information. Well, not only that, you know how you go to Google and there's a little search bar and you start to type a letter in it and it gives you all these other hits that you've looked for in the past? Well, there was a screen just like that that showed up on his webinar. And it, and it has... Google alert psychic, it has his name. Um, oh, there's an obituary for somebody named Holly Meisner in the Willamette, call, in the Chicago Tribune. Here's another one for another Phyllis Hudley obituary for, from Wisconsin, from the Racine Journal. Why is he, why is there obituaries? Why is he searching for obituaries? I wonder why, if he's psychic, why would he need to do that? So. This is on his webinar, and we were able to take a right off of there. So, I mean, there was so much information. This guy is hot reading. It was over and over and over. This guy was, like, wonderful. He goes on to TV, and he does these morning TV shows. These, these morning TV shows are absolutely the bane of television. I tell you, they feed these people. They're just like infomercials for them. So he goes on to the show, and they're, they've, this is his second time on the show, which means he's already got the goods on these people the first time, right? So this is the weather. Oops. This is the weatherman right here. He, this guy's name is Derek Kevra. And so he does a reading for him on the show, impromptu, right? Because he's never looked at this guy's information. So I went and I wrote it. I did some research on it. And he tells him all this information about, um, uh, you know, his father, no, his mother, and how she was a nurse, and all this amazing stuff. And Derek writes a post saying, oh my gosh, that was so amazing. And this is the phrase Mark and I hear all the time. There's no way the psychic could have known that. And we're like, really? Okay, let me show you how he knew it. So if you, you know, go... Like he's, he's watching, I don't know if he's like going through something right now or something. Um, do you also know too, because I'm getting this, there's... Um, He's, he is putting a nurse hat, um, like a medical image around your mom. So I almost feel like, I don't know if she took care of him. She, my mom uh, was a nurse and then teaches nursing and is retiring like tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> so, so like her is career. She so interesting, that's pretty specific. Let's look at his Instagram page. Oh, look, a picture of his mom and grandmother in nurse, nurse's hats. I wonder how hard that was to find. It took us a couple minutes. So, I mean, you know, come on. Um, let's see what this is. He's acknowledging a large family. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's also, I, now, I want to say, just full disclaimer, I'm not really the best at communicating with this type of energy, but there's also a dog in spirit for you. Oh. So I don't know, I'm not really good with like dog breeds and stuff, but there is definitely a dog here that I'm aware of and I don't know how it's really, I don't know if it's like a family dog, um, it's a female. Um, I would yeah. say a bigger dog, you know, um, bigger dog, light colored kind of. Um, I, I feel like 
She's definitely giving me the feeling of, of, of health problems at the end. So I feel like she's showing me like she had health issues. Um, but she's showing me definitely being like connected to your family. I yeah. almost, well, yeah. Um, yeah, we had a dog, uh, Sadie. Okay. Most people give a lot of information. They don't realize they're giving up the information who gave you the dog's name. And of course, his feedback, he's constantly like, yes, yes, you're right on the right track. You are so right, you know. Well, it took me a little bit longer to find Sadie. But she was on his mom's and his sister's page. Because, you know, people are linked together. You go from one person to the other person's page. I knew the mom's name because she was the nurse that was mentioned earlier. I go to her Facebook page, and here's Sadie. Poor Sadie. People, when I do this talk, people go, that was fine about the mom, but when they brung the dog in it, that was wrong. <laughs> Poor Sadie. So, as I said, we hear this all the time. There's no way that they could have known this. But this is all really wonderful. I'm preaching to the choir again. I'm telling psychic, uh, uh, skeptics, sorry. I'm telling skeptics all about this information. What good is it? You guys already know they're frauds. You already know it's not real. What good is it telling you? You've got to get this information out into a place that is where people are looking for the information. We need to get it to places where people are really curious. And they're going to be outside of our choir, people who have never even thought about skepticism. And that place is a really wonderful place with no pop-ups. Pop it's free to use. It's got links in blue that you can click on to give you more information. It's the most amazing place. It's the place where I think it's like the one of the top 10 most viewed websites in the world. Where is that place? Wikipedia. So we were able to update his Wikipedia page that we had created with all these wonderful things, the New York Times, um, all the other articles that were, had been written, uh, Seatbelt Psychic, all those things. It's all there. Do you guys recognize that photo? I, that was a selfie I had taken of him. And I, I made him look good. I edited it out, Mark and I. And, and there he is, and this is his Wikipedia page. And, oh, you like this? This is another thing that my team does. We're really notorious about making sure this paranormal tag is on everything that is paranormal related because we know most people go to Wikipedia pages and they read the lead. That's this right here. So it's very carefully written so that a person can go in, look at it, be off of it in a couple minutes, and they've gotten all the information they know. This guy's paranormal related. Oh, I see. He's been involved in something. Oh, he was stung in a New York Times article, Operation Pizza Roll, I think it says it up there, which is designed for people to be curious and go, what the heck is Operation Pizza Roll? And they'll find out more information about it. So this is his Wikipedia page. This is better than most of our scientists' Wikipedia pages. Unless GSOW has been involved, and then we've done a really good job. Look at all these citations. He's got 31 citations. This is beautiful. Nobody can touch this. This is amazing. Another thing we noticed about him, he's got a new TV show coming out. And he put up an ad on his Facebook page saying, hey, anybody in the Boston area, we want people on our show. You recommend your friend to come, and I'll do a reading for them, and they can be on the show. That's hot reading. So what we've got is we've, we've saved this little post that was deleted very soon after he, he put it up. But we're saving it because when the TV show comes out, we'll be able to say, oh, all those people in Boston that are being read, he already knew who they were because he, he knew who they were in advance. So we've been, we're watching this guy pretty carefully. I think I have a time for this. This is a really sad story. I wrote an article about a guy put a reading up of, uh, that he had had with Thomas John. As name is Ken Donner, absolutely no subscribers, hardly at all. So he, he said, there's no way in the world it could have known. I went and I contacted Ken Donner and asked him if he would speak to me. And I said, I know a lot of time has passed, and I'm very kind to people. I'm very, very kind. I don't call them stupid. These are not stupid people. They're people who are misled. And a lot of them are being preyed on. And I mean preyed as in not the praying hands, but this other kind of praying. It's really these are desperate people. And again, they are not stupid. They're just misled. And in America, at least, we're not teaching people about cold reading. We're not even teaching them critical thinking until you get to college. It's very sad. So I asked him, I said, look, I'm a reporter for Skeptical Inquirer. I'm doing some research on psychics. I see you had a reading with this guy. Now that some time has passed, would you say that it was as accurate as he thought? And he says, yes, it's as accurate as possible. One of the things that the psychic had said is that there was a, a car being sold for somebody who had died. And I said, well, you know, right here on your Facebook page, there is a car 
being sold. And he knew who you were on Facebook, right? And he says, no, he had no idea I was going to the show. There was absolutely no information that I was attending the show. And I said, oh, really? Um, let me see. Wait, wait, wait. I got to think I'm going to this. So I said to the guy, I said, he, you, there was no way he knew that you were attending the, the, the show? And he says, absolutely no way. They didn't know. I said, did you buy the tickets? He says, no, my sister-in-law bought the tickets. I said, really? Okay. So we spent a couple days and we looked all over to find where it was that the psychic knew this guy was coming to the event by name so that he'd be able to go back and link to his Facebook profile. And we found it. And I don't have the slide for it, but it was very sad because what it said is, the man himself went to the psychic event page and he wrote in there, he says, I'm having trouble, I bought tickets, I'm really excited to attend your event, I'm having trouble with the email. And then the psychic responded saying, well, we'll go ahead and check, you know, check that out for you and we'll get it all corrected. And the guy's like, oh, okay, that's great. I'm so excited to attend your show in two weeks. It's like, well, now the psychic has your email and he also knows your Facebook profile because you're linking it right there. So of course he went to your Facebook page. And I reached out to Ken again and I said, look, he just read you. And I didn't want to say you lied to me by saying that your sister-in-law bought the ticket when you obviously bought the ticket. Maybe he forgot, I don't know. And I said, well, now that you have all this information that he, you bought the tickets, you showed him your Facebook profile, your Facebook page is flooded with all the information he told you. Now that you have all that information, are you ready to say that he probably hot read you? And he said, no, I still believe. I said, wow, I'm really shocked. And he says, I'm getting close to death myself. And I have a lot of health issues. And I'm alone. And I need to believe. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. To see that these grief vampires, and that's why we call them grief vampires, they're preying on these people, these poor, desperate, lonely, end of life people. They're preying on them. And this is why we do this. We have to do so much more. Mark and I, as I'm getting ready to close here, Mark and I are doing a lot of uh, other stings, and we have one planned, Operation Lima Bean. And this is gonna be massive, and I can't give you many details, but we're waiting for the right media to come to us that we're courting them. And we're hoping that somebody's gonna come to us with enough funding, it's gonna take $12,000. But when we do it, it should really be it. So I want to make sure that if there's anybody in this audience that has any sway with some huge media that will give us at least 15 minutes. We had one that approached us that wanted to give us a two minute or three minute uh, video of the sting. And I'm like, I can't do this in three minutes. There's no way you can combine it to three minutes. So um, I didn't go with them. So I'm waiting for another person to come along and, and have that. I want to mention, okay, so we are the Gorilla Skeptics. And before I, I end, I want to mention that I do have a Wikipedia editing team and I have no editors living in New Zealand that have gone through my training and that is really sad. I have a huge Australian group and um, we keep track of all the Wikipedia pages that we have written and we have already written as of this morning 1,226 Wikipedia pages in multiple languages and these are all full of good science, great, great citations at the bottom. We're trying to influence people outside of their community and people get so much content off of Wikipedia that you can't believe how much um, the media uses it because the media is really kind of text. They don't have a lot of like time. So um, those Wikipedia pages that we've written, 1,226 pages, We've done a lot more edits than that. That's just pages we've created. Those pages have been viewed 51,185,873 times. So that is a lot of content. If those pages weren't well written, 51 million times people would have looked at Wikipedia pages that were crap or couldn't find the information on them. This is a lot of it's important work we're doing. And as I said, we don't have any New Zealanders. There's a lot of training that goes on. We train you to be amazing Wikipedia editors. I have one editor in South Africa, one. He hasn't even been with me a year. He's already written 98 pages concerning South Africa. And those pages have already seen 40,000 views. We have created a few Wikipedia pages for New Zealand. And those pages are, uh, we've created 14 pages focused on New Zealand people. There's one here, where, where, where are you, Mark? Right, there you go, right here we created, when I was spoke in Queenstown uh, a few years ago, Mark was one of the speakers. So one of the side effects of being 
uh, having me to your group is we tend to try to write uh, Wikipedia pages that interest us. And if a speaker interests us and they're in the audience, my team, they are going to write a Wikipedia page for them. So Mark Bryant has a Wikipedia page. We've written 14 of these pages and they've been viewed 59,000 times that are New Zealand focused. The New Zealand skeptics yourself, we've written their Wikipedia page. You've already got 7,000 views. Uh, we've, we've done quite a few. We've done a lot of the SGU pages. Uh, written them in multiple languages. And um, here I said I'd give you my website. So this is our website about time. When you look at it, I'll show you in a second, get your phones ready. So um, when you look at the, uh, my website, you're going to see this area that says Susan Gerbic with a little tab here. You click on that, it's going to have all the information of all the articles I've written. Um, if you, it also has all the screenshots, all the audio, the 15 minute audio that I just played you a few seconds of. All of that's there, all 15 minutes. And then down here at the very bottom, I have Gerbic tour notes. And there you'll find even more information about the things I've mentioned that I didn't have time to go into. This is where you take a picture. This is, <laughs> this is the abouttimeproject.org. So if you want to go and find more information about this. And lastly, I just want to say um, that um, okay. we're going to be in Australia. If anybody's in Australia, we're going to be speaking at other places come see us. And I wanted to point out one more time this, this beautiful uh, area behind you. Mark and I, and I have multiple people, lots of people on my team. As I say, there's 140 people on my Wikipedia team. There are hundreds more people who work with me on lots of projects. We work on uh, something called facilitated communication. I don't know if you've heard of that. That's another project that I'm working on. There's so much that we're doing. And I thought that this, this stained glass here kind of points this out. In the lower corner, you're going to see um, a red snaky thing. That's a, that is a World War I soldiers fighting against a multi-headed red uh, hydra. And I kind of feel like that. That's where we are in our community. That's what's happening right now. We have so much to do. Oh my gosh, you guys. Every moment, every day, we could be fighting against one little area and it's, you're just chopping a head off, and then here comes another head that pops up. It's like unsinkable ducks. But we have to do it. It's frustrating as heck, because no matter how many of these psychics we bust, somebody says, I can still believe. And so I want you guys to remember that we need you all, and it's important for you to bring your friends and to meet each other and get to know each other, because we have to, we have to fight against this. It is a war against pseudoscience and fake news. And we have to find a way of doing this. And I'm really pleading with you to try your best and bring people to more community things and do more things. Because that multi-headed red hydra is hanging out there. And we are the only thing keeping, keeping people from getting and falling into this nonsense. Thank you. Do I have time for anything? I don't know. And I'm happy to answer questions later, I promise you. Yeah. How do you approach someone and try to convince them when they're so stuck on their belief and they're actually trying to convert you? How do you approach them without wrecking a friendship or losing a friend? I'm, gr I'm glad you asked. That's a, if I only get one question, that's a fantastic question. Thank you. There's a man who has a podcast called Skeptoid. His name is Brian Dunning. And you guys should all subscribe to his podcast, along with the SGU, and Skeptic Zone from over in Australia. Um, he explains that it's a multi, multi um, kind of question. You have to look at the, the situation. If you have a friend who is participating in something that's harmful, I mean, harmful, like they're not taking their chemo, or they're not seeing a doc they're seeing a, a, a naturopath or somebody who's, or homeopath or something like that, instead of getting the medicine they need that's going to kill them. In that situation, you have to be a little more confrontive. You need to be like, look, I know that you, you can do, you can do your homeopath homeopathy if you want, but I really would like you to go see the doctor and get your chemotherapy and so on. So in those cases, you've got to be very strong about, let's, let's talk about it. never attacking them, never being mean. Don't make them feel like an idiot. They're going to circle the cognitive dissident wagons, and they're not going to listen to a damn thing you say. So if it's somebody you have a little more time with, and their belief isn't harmful, like the flat earth or 
you know, those, those are gateway things that lead you into more crazy stuff, but it's not going to harm you necessarily. If you have time and you can, over time, work with them, he talks about be kind to them, find the same, we don't often talk on the same language. We say theory, we say evidence, we say these things that they don't really see it meaning the same thing. We don't, we're not speaking the same language. So he says, try to find a commonality, a way of talking to them so that you, it's not confrontational. Maybe find something that they also think is stupid. So maybe if they believe in the flat earth, maybe you can talk to them about the hollow earth, or you can talk to them about Bigfoot, or homeopathy, or something else, and try to get onto the same terminology. What does evidence mean? How do we know? How do we really know something is real? How do you trust something? And if you can have and take time to work it out with them, not being confrontational, let them do their own research, which means they're going to Google it and go to Wikipedia, and hopefully they end up with one of our pages that's well written. And then they'll come back to you and they'll say, you know, I looked into that spontaneous human combustion thing, and that really seems to be a bunch of hooey. You're absolutely right. You'll be able to have a better conversation with them, and they'll trust you for not calling them an idiot. So it can take some time. It just depends on the situation. If you have just one on one with somebody in an elevator, you'll never see them again. Maybe you can just give them a nugget and say, if they're trying to say, you should try homeopathy for that talk, cough you have. You can say, really? You know, I heard that that's not real. I, th I thought it was not real. And you just put that little seed in their mind and maybe they'll walk away and Google it. And I know they'll get a really good Wikipedia page for homeopathy because it's excellent. So that's how I would approach it. It just depends. But I think the best thing we could do is be kind, listen to them, and remember that we're not too far away from being there ourselves. I know I believed in all sorts of paranormal crap when I was young and, you know, that, that way. So remember, we're not too far off ourselves. So don't make fun of people. Let them save face and let them kind of come to the conclusion themselves. Unless, of course, they're really trying to harm themselves or somebody else. And that's my answer.